start by having your lovely wife make up some spaghetti for you. Spaghetti and noodles. Um, in the sauce there's going to be things like ground beef, tomatoes, mushrooms, celery, onions, thyme leaves, um, a whole lot of love I'm sure. After the spaghetti and noodles are done cooking, rinse them off to get the starches off like you would normally. I let mine sit for a day. We had a uh, we had some spaghetti for supper that night. This is the day after, so it's a little bit more sticky and pasty. But basically, what I'm doing here is uh, dividing up portions. Uh, I tried to make three portions. It ended up being that I did a little bit more at the end. But right now, I'm, I'm looking about three portions. I ended up cutting up the spaghetti so the, the pieces weren't so long, the noodles weren't so long. I think that it's a better way to do it this way. There's less, um, it, there's more surface area and easier for it to dehydrate. So I cut it up pretty good. After it was all cut up and uh, I had about three portions on the plate, I just mounded the spaghetti sauce on there. I wanted to have a lot of flavor for when it rehydrated. So I put on a lot, including a lot of mushrooms. Next I wanted to mix it all together really well so that it can go in the dehydrator and be as even as possible. And there you have it. I have about three portions of spaghetti. Next I needed to divide my portions into three portions so that I could put them on separate trays and that when, I came, when it came time to put them in the cup and, and, and figure out the portion size after they were dehydrated, I would know what to do. Um, this turned out to be not that great of an idea because it only filled up about three three or four trays and I ended up throwing a lot more spaghetti on after it and uh, doing five trays. Okay, time for the dehydrating. We need some Reynolds uh, parchment paper. There's my dehydrator. It's a simple one I got from Walmart. Super cheap. The name of it is Sultan Vita Pro and you want to make sure that it can go up to about 160 Fahrenheit. That's the temperature you need to be able to dehydrate meat properly or so I've heard. Here's where the parchment paper comes in. These trays are uh, slotted, so putting the spaghetti right on the tray itself, it would just all fall through. So you have to make some room and uh, cut some parchment paper for it. Here all I'm doing is taking a pen and attempting to score a line, uh, mar mark a line where I can cut around, but my stupid pen does not want to work on this parchment paper for anything. Grab a new pen and try again. So then you just cut out the circle and uh, you want to make it a little bit tinier than, just a touch smaller than the uh, circumference of the tray. Remember to do the middle circle. Here I didn't even want to mess around, I just cut right through it with the pen. <laughs> Perfect circle. There we are, ready to start dehydrating. So like I said, I had five trays, I cut five circles. Um, they fit in there perfectly fine. They're a little bit rounded at first, but once you start getting things in them, they, they, they lay down properly. Um, the, the circle in the middle is important for the air flow to come through. You want to spread the food on pretty thin. Here I'm just uh, trying to space it out as much as I can, and then spread it thin after. Um, if you leave it thick or put too much on the tray, it's going to take a lot longer to, to dehydrate. And this way, spreading it thin over the course of five trays, it kind of sped up the process. The process, whole process took probably about 16 hours, to be honest. There, that looks good. Now I'm just stacking the trays together. There's a little gap you can leave if you want more airflow, or you can stack them right on top of each other. I chose to use the gap. It's all done now. You've got to put the lid on and crank up that heat. 10 after 7 when I turn it on, expecting about 12 hours, so I leave it on overnight while I'm sleeping. Nothing left to do now but to enjoy a good glass of red wine. Mmm, yes, yes. Taste it on your palate. Mmm, quite good. Oh, yes, waft it, waft it good. Yes, yes. It's been just under 2 hours, and I like to every couple hours take the trays out, rotate them, and maybe turn the spaghetti a little bit. Um, by separating it. That helps in the drying process. Almost 11 now and this old man's going to bed. Wakey wakey Kevin Bakey.
just a look at it in the morning and you can definitely see the progress. Uh, it's thinned out quite a bunch. The spaghetti noodles are basically done but the mushrooms and some of the sauce still has a little bit of moisture in it. Going on about 16 hours now. Time to shut this bad boy down and divvy it up. Just one last check on it to make sure she is good and done. And to the best of my knowledge, that's is about as dehydrated as spaghetti is going to get. And I'm going to store it in my freezer until I go backpacking, so it's going to be fine. Either way. Look at that dehydrated mushroom intact. That is pure perfection right there. Bam, son. Now to take the parchment paper containing my dehydrated spaghetti off of the racks, bang it out a bit, and uh, divvy it up. Sometimes you can reuse your parchment paper, like when you're doing the ground beef and rice thing, but with this, the, the parchment paper gets so greasy, so you need to crumple that bad boy up and get rid of her. No use for it no more. Scales. I'm using my Snow Peak Titanium Cup to cook with and to measure it out. So basically, things are going to rehydrate double their size. So I'm filling my cup up about halfway so that I'll have a full cup of rehydrated spaghetti when it comes time for dinner. And that's enough for me. So that's what I'm doing here, and then I will be putting into zip, small Ziploc bags to transport it. It ended up turning out a little bit bulkier than I had hoped or thought it would. So I had a little bit left over and four meals out of the five trays. So f almost a meal a tray, four meals. Bam. Fast forward 20 minutes later, new Ziplocs, bigger Ziplocs. Sandwich size Ziplocs were a must. These sandwich Ziploc bags are about double the size of the snack bags. They're a little bit more bulky, but no big deal. It's going to be, give me a ton of room, and that's what I need. So I ended up putting that little bit that was left over um, in div divvied it up into the four. So I'm going to have four bigger suppers than I originally thought, which I'm sure I will like when I'm out there. Each meal weighed about 92 grams. 